Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent. And today we're going to be playing more of the Plus One Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which whenever we play a unit, we will also spawn a one power copy of that unit in the same row. Now, recently we were looking at a game-breakingly powerful deck, a deck that many assumed was unbeatable. However, have no fear, I have the counter. How is it possible, you ask? Well, let's give it a look. Okay, so today we're going to be playing a Skelga Reckless Flurry deck that is designed specifically to maximize our damage in just the right way to take down the quote-unquote game-breaking combo of Itaran of Olivo plus Snowdrop. So if you missed the video in which we were using this combo, I strongly recommend that you give that a look to give you that context, but to give you the abbreviated version, Itaran is extremely strong in this seasonal event because he will create copies of himself until he fills an entire row. Then, usually people will use Skoytel's Gorilla Tactics Leader ability to move three of those Itarans, meaning that one row will have three Itarans with three power, and one row will have one Itaran with six power, and the others with one power. Then another second turn that allows them to play a bunch of copies of Snowdrop, who can immediately use her Order ability, which will boost all of those copies of Snowdrop, giving them on the order of about 250 points in two turns, which is extremely hard to keep pace with. And that's why many people were saying that that deck was ruining the seasonal event. However, I'm here to tell you that it is possible to defeat that deck, and this is how. Our strategy is focused on two key cards that can destroy all the Iterants before they get the chance to spawn in all the copies of Snowdrop. The first card that can do that is Wild Boar of the Sea, because Wild Boar of the Sea will damage every unit that is already damaged by one, and then damage everyone by one again. That means that Wild Boar of the Sea will remove all the one power Iterants, so don't need to worry about them. It will reduce all the three power Iterants to just one power, and then it will reduce the original six power Iterant down to five. So in sum, once you've played Wild Boar of the Sea, that means there are four Iterants with a total of eight power across all of them. Then, by using all of your charges of Reckless Flurry, you have nine damage, which means in one turn, you can remove all of the Iterants before they get the chance to use their game-breaking combo. Similarly, Lambert is the other card, like Wild Boar the Sea, that can deal enough damage that, when combined with our leader ability, is capable of taking out all of those Iterants. In this case, again, we're destroying all the one power Iterants, and we're reducing all the three power Iterants to just one strength, and then the original Iteran will get reduced from six to four, which means that in total, we will have four Iterants with a total of seven strength, and once again means that with all of our leader ability charges, we can remove all those Iterants in one turn. So for that reason, whenever we're playing this deck, we want to always have access to one of those two cards and save our three leader ability charges so that whenever Iteran pops up, we can make sure that we can immediately get rid of him. Other than that, we have a lot more damage, which means if Iteran does not get played immediately and we have a little bit of time to set up, we might have other ways that can also remove Iteran, but that's mostly just a backup plan. And then we have some units that either get healed or boosted when we apply that damage. So I'll flip through the deck here to show you what we have. And in addition to, of course, having those two key cards, Wild Boar the Sea, and Lambert, we also want to have a bunch of tutors to make it easier to get them. Dagger is the unit that gets boosted whenever we apply that damage, so this is our best source of generating points for ourselves. And then on Crate Crate Sword, assuming we have the time to apply the damage, can also become fairly big. Fairwisher Mentor is a finisher. If we play him late on in a round when we've damaged a lot of opposing units and may even have some damage units of our own, then he's going to be fairly big. Then once we start getting to the end of the deck, we're looking at cards that either have very situational uses, or in some cases are just cards that we'd rather not play. Although Brothfar Hunter does give us some consistent damage, so this one is definitely still solid. And if given enough time, then the Oncrate Warcryers can also get boosted a fair bit. So there's a look at the deck. Of course, the overall emphasis is on applying damage, which is relatively versatile, but the real purpose for this deck is to have just the right kinds of damage to get rid of Iteran before he can start creating all those copies. So now let me show it to you in action. Okay, so going against Movement Skoytel here, will it be an Iteran deck? Okay, so we have Wild Boar of the Sea, and we have Geralt Quen, that means that we can get Lambert. So we have the answers if they do go with Iteran. In that case, let's dump the Bear Witcher Adept, and maybe we get rid of one of the two hunters. Okay, and they begin by spawning in some Scoytel Neophytes. And that does, of course, take up some row space. Does make it a little less effective to go Itaran. So going double thumb the sentry here suggests movement. And perhaps only movement in round one, and not any Itarans. In that case, I think we play the longships here, and we might bait out 
some of their later ability charges to move them into the range row. If so, then that takes away from any future Iterans that they might have, and also makes it safer to play Dagger in the future. Okay, Hawker Smuggler. For some hand boosting. And they'll do those transformations. And we can shut down at least some of that hand boosting. I think we go Blood Eagle here. Into the Brawfar Hunter. Then use this. Apply some damage to you. Take you out. And then maybe next priority would be to remove the weaker of the Dilbathana sentries. We'll get a little bit closer to doing that. Okay, now Dried Matron, here's where the actual movement comes in. And yeah, let's actually load up on more hunters here. That way we can get rid of this double thunder sentry for good. And I think next priority is to try to take this one out. Okay, Milena is, well, potentially quite a problem. Because every unit that we have out there is Rolock. So it's just a question of which ones do they choose to mess with. And the answer is the longships. So I think we go Gerd here, in the range row, damage all those units. That way we can pick off potentially both Molenas with our Hunters. Because as I was saying, that was going to be a bit of a problem. Okay, Lacerate is very effective in this occasion, because of course we did Rosak a lot. But a lot of that damage was coming on long ships that didn't have any additional value, and a one power Gerd. It's time for some kind of points on our side, either through the Bear Witcher Adept, possibly even Dagger. Let's try to play it safely with just the Bear Witcher Adept. And then let's damage you. Selective Mutation is actually a little bit surprising. That may very well be a way to get Gezros or possibly even a Gat Witcher. But you tend not to see it in Scoytail movement. And I think now we go Samuelford's Tremors, because if we do this, then we can finally get rid of this second Dolbathana sentry. Okay, and this is a cat, which that might have been the card that they brought into their hand. They are dealing two damage at this stage, but they got so lucky. <laughs> they got rid of our two damaging cards. So I think we go Bear Witcher Mentor here, and this is the last card that we'd like to play in this round. Okay, and with this movement here, I think they are going to take the lead against us. And actually, destroying that Bear Witcher Depth was significant because this one's going to heal by one point, getting us up to 31, which means if we do nothing, we're one point short of a tie. And as much as we'd like to save some of these cards, I think we probably do go with Wild Boar the Sea here. Just to confirm the round one win. And lock in last save for round three. So it means we had to go a card down in round one to do it, but I think that's worthwhile. Likely means we'll try pass in round two, but so be it. Okay, and let's dump the Axeman. Oh, Neuromancy is definitely a good pick up there. This is just about as good as it gets for our hand. And if we were feeling bold, we could deliberately play, say, round one of Oneermancy to get something out of our deck and see if we can bait our opponent into playing one of their bigger cards. We do have some decent value bronze units, and so I think that is potentially worth doing. I'm thinking of a Drummond Berserker in particular. Of course, first turn, it's going to damage itself by one and won't have any target to deal the damage to. But it'll also just turn into another six power unit, which is somewhat hard to keep pace with. And Hawker Smuggler is a decent play in that it will, of course, give them some hand boosts. However, it is, of course, not good enough for them to catch up to us here. So I think we do pass now and force them to play another card. And we're hoping that this damage hits this one. It does not. That's unfortunate. Okay, Shaping Nature is another one of the Echo cards, so much like our Oneer Mancy, they're probably willing to play that here. 
So it's actually not enough. Oh no. They need to do something here to change that. They have to use one round of leader ability. Probably not something they wanted to do because, of course, that's not coming back. And it means they don't get the boost from this Hawker Smuggler. Okay, we drew to Onirmancy, Lambert, and Herkia. So this hand is amazing. One problem is that Geralt Quinn is here specifically to tutor in Lambert. So I think we get rid of you. And I think a Berserker is a solid option. So we probably stick with this. Okay, they have Iteran. But I have news for you. So they can only move two of them with their leader ability. So that means that we go Geralt Quinn into Lambert. Then we use Lambert to damage the Iterans. And that gets rid of all but three of them, which we can then destroy with Reckless Flurry. And Reckless Flurry has exactly nine damage if we use all of our charges here, which is enough to destroy all of them. So sorry, buddy. But there are no Iterans allowed. Okay, now Nature's Rebuke, I mean, sure. So now let's set up some of our damage, and I think we should maybe go Royal Decree into a long shift. Okay, Dried Matron. Solid with the movement. But we have some damage. And now we go Herkia to add on to that damage. And would have loved if we had gotten rid of that one power dried matron instead. Okay, Oniromancy, if you have Gesrus, you're probably looking for it here. Noble Thumb of the Century is also solid, for sure. Okay, and because they have no leader ability charges remaining, and they've already played Milena, that means that it should be safe to go with Dagger here. So he'll get boosted from all this damage we have set up. And here is Gesras. And he will destroy some of our units, of course, yes. But now we can shut off a bit of that engine by getting rid of one of the Dolbathana sentries. And then also getting down some Oncrate Greatswords. Which, with all of our damage, should be having a decent amount of time to get boosted back up. A shaping nature for a, what I imagine will be just the pure boost. That's solid, especially considering it means they get to avoid playing unit here, which would have meant we would deal some damage and get boosted in the process. I think now we go Neomancy into our other greatsword, and we're going to be a little hard-pressed to have time to get them fully healed up. Some of that is, of course, going to come from Herkia, but we're also hoping that this last guard is a unit so that we can deal some more damage with the longship as well. And it is Yurden, which, to tell you the truth, in the melee row, is not that good. Yeah, they even Yurden themselves there. So now we go Berserker, and unfortunately, it's not going to have quite enough time to transform into the Bear Abomination, but it will give us one more damage, and let's also hit the range row here, and that will be enough to overtake them. No Iterans allowed. Okay, go against Syndicate here, and they'll go first. All right, and my immediate concern is that they might have Salamander, and they might poison every unit and completely wipe our board, so that does make... <laughs> so I think that's the thing that we're trying to play around here. Let's get rid of the Tercy Jacksman. Dagger is definitely a big pickup. I think we also get rid of one of our adepts. Crow's Eye uh, could help in the case of poison. Okay, although they're starting off with what looks to be Eternal Fire. Which is not usually the direction you'd go in with Salamander, so maybe it'll be different than that. And usually the thing with Eternal Fire is that you swarm the board with a bunch of spawned units, and that would be great for something like Lambert, or just generally speaking, this deck. So let's start with the Greatsword. Then we'll see what the best source of damage is going to be. 
Okay, tax collector, give them some coins. And then they boost that tax collector. I was gonna say, we could have potentially gotten rid of that one fairly easily, the one that got spawned in. But if they are going Fire Sworn, then I think that means they're gonna use those coins to spawn in those units. And we're kind of fine with that because that is what Lambert is so good against. But I think in that case, we actually just go for the War Criers here. Because there is a damage unit out there, so they will get boosted. Okay, Townsfolk will up some time to get bigger. And this melee row is definitely looking like it's going to be the place where we play Gerd. But we have a little bit of time before we need to do that. In fact, I think we could use getting some more damage out there. So let's go Oniromancy into either Herkia or a Longship. Let's go Herkia. Okay, Greater Brothers, if we can remove its armor, will get completely destroyed. And that is something we could potentially end up doing. So they're going to, oh, spend those coins to give themselves armor. I don't know how necessary that really was. I think now let's get out the Berserkers. That'll give us some more damage. They'll pass. That is early, and for that reason, it's not really a huge deal. We can pass them pretty easily here. Primary question is just, what's the most efficient way to do that? And I think, just to be safe, let's go Gerd, melee row. That is definitely enough. Might have been a little bit overkill. And then we'll throw out this damage as well, and that'll definitely do the trick. So it took us one extra card to win round one, but that's perfectly fine. Okay, so we drew into Oniromancy round two, a longship, and then Samilford's Tremors. I think we get rid of the Adept, though. Hunter is okay. Crow's Eye, if we are actually expecting them to have a Salamander, that would be nice. Although, given how they seem to be going pure Fire Swarm, I think we're safe to go with something else. And we do theoretically have a throwaway card here. And in that case, I think we probably go with a the Hunter. They're decent, but... Especially since we have two right now. Don't really need to have two in our hand. Oh, Sacred Flame is decent. There's all the spawning we were expecting them to have. And this is why Lambert's going to be so good. We play him and we're going to destroy all those two power tokens. But I think we still save him because we're actually still in the lead here. So we can pass now, force them to play another card. And we've already baited them into playing a decent card. They'll go Townsfolk, which is, I suppose, a relatively weak throwaway card. So we give them round two, largely to keep last save for round three. Okay, so we got a Warcrier. Those worked pretty well for us in round one. Bear Witcher Mentor is a good finisher. And then we also used Great Swords in round one to decent effect. And I think this looks pretty solid. We have a nice combination of units to get boosted and then, especially through our tutors, access to damage. Okay, Passiflora is strong. Not necessarily what I was expecting, though. I think we set up our damage here by going with the long ships. And if we really want to, we could shut down Peaches by playing a couple rounds of Reckless Flurry. I think let's try to wait one turn before doing that, though, because that way we can get either Dagger or the Greatsword down and they'll get boosted or healed in the process. Okay, well... Well, well, well. Who do we have here? Who do we have here? If it isn't the very card this deck is designed to counter, well, boy, do we have a treat for you. We actually have two options here. We can go Lambert, or we can go Onir, Mancy, or Royal Decree into Wild Boar of the Sea. I think I actually prefer Wild Boar of the Sea here, if we're assuming that they're going to spawn in additional units later on. So let's go Royal Decree into Wild Boar of the Sea. Have to play in the melee row. It will destroy all the one-strength Iterans, and then this is where we use some leader ability charges to get rid of the remaining Iteran. And there we go. That'll do the trick. Adriano the Mink does have the ability to spawn some units. Which they will do. 
And that Sly Seductress is a little bit tough to work around here because that will continue to get boosted a lot. So I think what we do here is let's play the Brock Bar Hunters. And then let's deliberately remove that shield. And maybe even hit you again. And can't get rid of you with Reckless Flurry here. So I think we wait. Oh, they have Snowdrop. So they were going for the Iterated Plus Snowdrop combo, it would look like. But we obviously shut that off. And in fact, we immediately destroyed that first Snowdrop. And I think this is the part where we start to get a bit greedy. Let's play Dagger. And then now let's use Reckless Flurry to get him boosted up a bit. It's probably not going to be enough to get rid of any of their engines per se. But at some point we need to start setting up our own. Okay, Sly Seductress does hurt a bit. I'm curious to see if they'll use the shield here. Because if they don't, they do on one of them. That's a decent target for Lambert now. So I think we do go that route to at least remove two of them. Let's go damage you to get rid of the shield. And let's damage you just to weaken you. Then we go Lambert. And with Lambert, we hit you. Another Sly Seductress. How many of those do you have? I mean, we would have saved Lambert. I figured you were done with them. But I think now we go Greatsword. And I deliberately played those in the melee row so that if they have a Yurden, they're not going to want to use it to get these guys boosted up, even if it means resetting daggers. Okay, Passiflora again. Solid engine. But we can deal the damage, which gets us boosted. And now we can use the Hunters to get rid of one of you. Let's go with another engine of ours, the War Criers. Okay, Doedric is a good combo to go along with Snowdrop. It's a little late to be getting a lot of points out of that combo, though. I think we go Stamilford's Tremors here. Then Onirmancy, if they have a Yurden, my guess is they're reaching for it here. They don't. And Peaches is, of course, a solid engine, yes. Although it is fairly late to be trying to do that. So I think what we do now is we remove a couple of engines. Let's go Brockbar Hunter to remove one of the Peaches. Then let's go Onirmancy into Blood Eagle. Which does, technically, by playing additional cards, give them a little more boosting. But then I was thinking, Curse Each Axeman. Remove you. Because you were going to generate some value from continuing to draw cards to boost Snowdrop. Now again, because they're getting points whenever we play cards from the Sly Seductresses, might have actually been better to pass on Blood Eagle on that occasion. They do have Yurt. So how big is this? Not big enough. Not big enough. Because remember, those great swords have 10 base power. And then we were also waiting around to go with a Bear Witcher Mentor. Although they actually do still have a decent amount of boosted units. And by doing that Yurden, there aren't very many damage units on our side either. So not as good of a finisher as we might have hoped, but still certainly good enough. So there you have it. Itaran, Snowdrop, Doedric, doesn't matter. We got you. Okay, so going in Skoyatel here. And they'll go first. And we have a lot of early damage here with the long ships and Herkia, but we are definitely light on the boosting engines. I think we dump at least one round of Adepts. Axeman is not really much better, so I think we get rid of you. Lambert, okay. So we have good damage, but I'd like to have a little bit more boosting. Golbathana Sentry, so expecting some movement here. They actually boosted the one that had the starting strength. Okay, I think that was a mistake. So let's get at some long ships here. And there's a chance this is going to bait out some of their movement to move these guys out of the melee row. Let's see. No, they're just setting up more movement. Oh, although that time in the melee row, meaning that maybe they are planning to move our units. 
because you don't see it very often, but that is, of course, for dealing damage when they move us. In that case, I think we go Herkia, because although she's also row-locked to the melee row, even if she gets moved to the range row, she can still deal damage, it's just she can't do that split three damage between enemy units in a row. And I was kind of hoping we'd get rid of one of these guys. Okay, they're just loading up on damage. And Lambert actually is tempting here, because at this rate, he could destroy three out of the four Dobothana sentries. They haven't done any movement yet, so that's strange. But presumably, they're trying to set up something. Alternatively, we go with the less ambitious Brockbar Hunters. Maybe that's good enough here. Let's get rid of you, and let's weaken you. And we'll see if Hercules happened to finish this guy off. They do. So if they were planning on moving us, then no longer nearly as effective. They do have Gesserus, though. Okay, so here's their movement. So it's kind of early for him. So this is strange. Because he's only going to boost one. Rather than the entire row. And this is a tough one, because there are lots of ways to deal damage to the Gesrosses, but it's hard to guarantee that we get rid of them altogether. We are definitely going to lose this longship and possibly this Herkia as well. Let's do this at the very least. And then I think we just get down the War Criers, go for the boosting. Okay, so we'll get some boosting there. That is, if they had armor, which now they don't. Oh, and actually, I forgot their adrenaline was not active there, so that was not guaranteed that they were going to get rid of that unit. They lucked out that they hit the longship, and we actually could have gotten away with not using Herkia's ability there. This is just so strange how early they played Gesras. But the other thing we could do is we could potentially go near Mancy into Gerd in the melee row, deal some damage there, and now do this, hurt that Gesras. Now, if we wanted to, we could Lambert get rid of it in a future round. Okay, Brover. Well, I mean, they don't have any dwarves with armor because we removed all that armor. Other than the one they just played, but that's going to change. Oh, true. Of course, that Gesserus is going to get boosted when it moves because they do still have some total ton of sentries hanging out. And we're running out of the card, too, that we're willing to play, realistically. So I think we go Lambert here, and we're going to save Wild Boar of the Sea. Let's hit the Gesrosses. But then I'm going to save our leader ability, because at least at the moment, we are in the lead. And in theory, if they do actually have Iteran, then we need to save that leader ability. And that's also a misplay. They should be playing that in the range row. Now they'll apply their leader ability here to get some armor, and now... That unit will get boosted. And at this rate, we really don't want to play any more of these cards. Assuming that there's the non-zero chance that they have the Iteran combo, in which case we need to save Wild Boar of the Sea, and we need to save Leader Ability. Other cards aren't doing much here. So that means they take round one. And we're actually out of decent Witchers, so I think we get rid of Geralt Quen. And we get rid of the Bear Witcher Adept. And get another Bear Witcher Adept. That can be our throwaway if they drive past. They don't, though. Alright, and if we are going to play in round two, then I think we got to go with the Longship here. Because we don't want to get stuck playing that late in a round. Living Armor. Okay. Very strong card in this seasonal event. And that suggests that they're pushing pretty hard in round two here. In which case, I think we go Berserkers now. They're going Mahakam Defender. Doesn't have a source of boosting right now. So we'll not get boosted every turn. And I think we need to get Dagger out here. Because otherwise they're going to have a lot of points. And it's going to be hard for us to catch them. And I do normally like to use our leader ability as soon as we play Dagger, so that that way we at least have some way of boosting our one strength Dagger, so that he's not begging to be destroyed. But I think we try to wait it out one turn. 
They at least get a little bit of damage coming from the Drummond Berserker, getting it up to a 2. Yeah, and Francis Bedlam does not have damage. That's fine. Now let's go Oniromancy into Blood Eagle. Get rid of one of those Francis Bedlams. And use that to give us a greatsword. And let's actually put you in the melee row because at least as of right now, you guys are low power. Therefore, they're not going to want to reset this row. There's a good counter against the potential Yurden that they might want to use on Dagger. Okay, Sarah Kwan is uh, definitely a card we'd like to destroy. And we can destroy one of them for sure with Wild Boar of the Sea. But that two power one will remain... And so for that reason, it might be worth using a leader ability charge here. And we're hoping that we at least get one damage on this one. We did not. It does still boost dagger enough that I think it's probably safe enough that we can save those other two charges. And at this point, I mean, if their last card is in ran, doesn't really matter. So let's go wild board the scene now. And we'd very much like for this to be our last card. Okay, and uh, they don't have a dragon in their hand, because they don't have a hand. So they won't have time to use that order ability, which means they will not be able to remove dagger. In which case, they should have just not played that card, because now we have a two-card advantage going into round three. Definitely some unconventional plays here, which is making it really hard to play against them, but it's working in our favor for now. So let's get rid of the Bear Witcher Death. So let's get rid of the Bear Witcher Death. Okay, that's a little bit better. And let's start off with the Hunter. In preparation for some damage. Okay, Old Geared can't have his power chains, which is actually tough for us. What with us being a damage deck. In which case, I think what we do here is we go Geralt Quen into the Bear Witcher Adept, which is one of the few cards we have remaining at this stage that does not just focus on dealing the damage. Obviously, we don't have any targets for the Hunters at the moment. The Miner, not too much of a threat. And also a target for Blood Eagle. Let's use it to get out a Berserker. So I don't think we're going to have enough damage to fully boost up one of our Greatswords. And so I guess we use the Hunters here to deal damage to the Miner, because we'll at least get the cooldown back for our last turn. Okay, Talker Smuggler, which, again, just really odd plays here. Why would you ever play that card last? I don't know. So we already have the lead here, but let's go Tremors. Into Bear Witcher Mentor. And then finish the job with our Brockbar Hunters. And see if we can actually hit any of these units that can be damaged with our Reckless Flurry. Okay, and there we go. Definitely not a textbook one. It got ugly, but we did get the job done. So there is the look at a Skelga deck that is actually capable of stopping those crazy Iteran combos. If you liked the video, then make sure to the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.